In part two of our squat rack series, we're going to be building this center base. So that's this back piece back here. Or if we look back at our finished product, this middle piece in the back right here. Now in part one, I made the video a little bit longer than I had intended to. So let's see if we can't make this video just a little bit shorter. So the first thing I want you to do is start a sketch on this face right here on the left base. And I want you to toggle your slice. Now at first it looks like you're not doing anything, but if we change our view slightly, you can see I'm cutting out the right base. Let's zoom in and grab a rectangle tool. And I want to start by drawing a rectangle that is on this edge right here and then goes down to the bottom edge over here. And so it should be locked on to the bottom and the top of the fillets here. And then let's add some dimensions. I want, and then let's add some dimensions. I want this edge to be one inch from this circle. And the same on the other side, I want this edge to be one inch from the center of this circle. And let's finish our sketch. And we're going to extrude this seven sixty fourths of an inch and make sure you don't select these circles. We're going to need those holes later, but I do need you to make sure you grab this top rectangle up here and let's see if I can make it clear here. This bottom rectangle down here, you can see it's not selected at the moment. This bottom rectangle down here representing these fillets. So you should have three shapes in total selected, not including those circles. And make sure you hit new component, not join and hit OK. And let's go ahead and change the name of this new component to center base. And then let's start a sketch on our new component. And again, I'm going to toggle slice until I don't have that right base in front of me. And I want to draw two more rectangles. And so let's go to the top to the bottom and the top to the bottom. And so we have our heights already. And how wide do I want these things to be? Well, what are we making right now? We're making this part of the frame right here. And so it's the same frame. And so the dimension is still going to be 2.5 inches wide and over here as well, 2.5 inches wide. And I want it to be one inch off these center circles. And so one inch from here and over here, the same from this edge to this center circle, one inch and finish our sketch. And I'm going to use this square later. Right now, I'm just going to focus on this square. So let's go ahead and extrude this. And I want it to come out halfway. And then just like before, I'm just going to mirror everything. So let's just go. Well, what was the uh, total length again? The total length from inside to inside is 43. So once again, let's just do 43 over two and hit okay. And to make sure this isn't dangerous, let's go ahead and get rid of some of these sharp edges. Let's click our fillet button and let's get these four edges on this new extrusion. But also let's go ahead and get these sharp edges here on the original extrusion, not this face, this edge. And we'll go back around to the front and get these edges as well. So you should have eight edges in total selected. And let's type in seven over 64 and hit okay. And then let's go ahead and add our shell from this face right here. And once again, tell it to be seven over 64. And then to add this extra little triangular piece, and then to add this extra little truss piece, let's start a sketch on this face and let's draw ourselves another square. And so from the top to the bottom, let's tell it to be two and a half inches wide. And then how far are we going to tell it to be from this edge? Actually, to figure that out, I'm going to finish my sketch. And I'm going to go back in time to my last sketch. 
and toggle slice again and let's set down a dimension between these two edges here and it looks like it's just three and yeah let's go ahead and create a driven dimension and finish our sketch and so that's how far away i want this to be from this edge as well and so let's go back into our latest sketch right click edit sketch and i'm going to tell this to be three inches from this edge over here and hit finish sketch. Then I'm gonna to go to my sketches and I'm gonna tell that last sketch to be visible as well. We never did use that second rectangle on the left and let's create a loft between these two sketches. And real quick, sometimes it will have a hard time selecting these two squares. It'll try to select the whole face. And if that's happening to you, let's talk about why. If you look up here in your selection tool, you'll notice that I have a lasso tool selected instead of my normal window selection. That's because I accidentally hit the two button on my keyboard at some point. If you hit one, you go to window. If you hit three, you go to paint select. So if I want to toggle through, I just hit one on my keyboard, two on my keyboard, or three on my keyboard. And you can see that's changing. I want it to be on window select. And then while I have the loft tool open, I'm going to go down to my selection filters. And I'm going to uncheck select all and make sure I only have sketch profile selected. And so what this does is it makes it where I can't select anything but a sketch profile. And so I'll select both of these. And it's very important that you make this not a join, but a new body. Then I'm going to turn all my sketches off and let's go to fill it. And let's add fillets to these four new edges that we've created. So I'm going to go down here to the bottom view. And once again, make this 7 64ths of an inch. And hit OK. And then I need to shell out this new body that we just created. So I'm going to go to shell. And I'm going to change my view to the back. And I'm going to tell these two things to be invisible over here. So I'm going to go to... Uh, left base entirely and tell that to go away and I'm going to go into center base and I'm going to tell this other body to go away as well so we go down to bodies and tell that to be invisible and it looks like this is actually not in our new component uh, we'll fix that in a second just tell that body to go away and then let's select these two faces both so that we shell out from both sides and let's type in 7 over 64 and hit OK and so the reason why this is not inside this body here is actually because it looks like it's in the bodies up here in the actual file. And so we open up that drop down menu and we can just drag this from here into center base right here. And you can see now I've got both of them down here. And then go back to my home view. And I'll turn my left base back on. And then I just want to mirror both of these bodies so that I have it on both sides. And so let's go to create, mirror. I'm going to make sure I have body selected and I'm going to select both of my bodies across this plane here. And let's make sure we have new body selected and hit OK. And how does that look? And if we look, it looks like we actually have a little mistake going. It looks like it's actually going into our shape. Why is that happening? Well, if we go back in time, and if you look down here at our timeline, you can actually see it can be kind of hard to find what we're looking for. And so let me go ahead and hover over center base right here and just select that circle. And so that removes a lot of things from my timeline. Now I'm only dealing with things in my center base. And I want to go back to that first extrusion. You might remember that first extrusion went 7 64ths of an inch. And so then when I went 43, if we go to our second extrusion, when we went 43 over 2, what that did was that was 43 over 2 plus 7 64ths of an inch right here. And so we have to account for that. And so right after this parentheses, before the times 1, I'm going to write in minus 7 64ths to account for that. And you can see it just gets a little bit smaller. And hit OK. And now if we look you'll see it's not entering in because it subtracted 7 64ths in both directions. And so I'm going to go back up to my main squat rack component and click. I'm sorry, I meant to say assembly, not component. That's the squat rack assembly. And then the last thing we need to do 
is just tell these two bodies to be one. So let's go to modify, combine, and I'm going to select this body and this body and hit OK. And now if we look in our bodies of our center base, you can see we only have three bodies. I'm going to make sure I save my progress. And we are done with this video.